<laughs> Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. In today's video, we're going to discuss the rumored Fast and Furious coaster called Fast and, or, yeah, Fast and Furious Hollywood Drift coming to Universal Studios Hollywood. This would be a drifting coaster, and Screamscape has some details, some rumored details that they have heard on what this coaster may entail, and sounds pretty cool. So let's check it out. Share the screen here first. Hold on. Oops. All right. So. All right. So. We have. This detail. All right. So here you go. In the Fast and Furious ride. Um, there are, again, just rumors. That um, there is a planned Fast and Furious attraction, and this will be um, if built to its current specifications, it'll be called Fast and Furious Hollywood Drift, and it'll be on. It'll call for the removal of both the Animal Actor Show and Special Effects Show, as we've been hearing, and it'll be. From Intamin, which is great. Intamin has worked with uh, Universal recently on the Velocicoaster and Hagrid's and Universal Orlando. So Intamin and Universal are having a great relationship right now, just like Disney and Vacoma work with, uh, do a lot of coasters together. Intamin and Universal are, are building a partnership as well. Disney does work with Intamin as well, though. Uh, the last one I remember, uh, at least here on the West Coast at Disneyland Resort, is the Incredicoaster slash Cal California Scream and slash Incredicoaster that is an intimate coaster built in 19, or sorry, 2001. That's the last one I remember certainly here on the West Coast and maybe anywhere in the Disney company for the last uh, decade or so. But yes, so I'd be on the upper lot taking one of those two theaters. Special effects show is not coming back. It's been removed from the website. So no matter if this comes or not, that show is gone. Theater is still there, but that show is gone. And the overall on track though is still fluid, but this is the current idea. It'll be a dual-sided loading station like Thunder Mountain uses. Um, you got the Mario Kart track is using a uh, dual dual loading station. Neon Jones, you know, it's where you get out in the, the credit coaster and uses a dueling station as well. It's where you're kind of like on an island and there's two loading platforms with two coaster trains you can lead on either side um almost almost like also a subway train if you're on the island and then there's a train going east or north and east and west north and south next to you that's the dual loading uh system there and the roller coaster is going to have a four uh, fast four fast pure style cars so those Awesome cars from the movies and those cons picture cars that you see on the studio tour will probably be uh, the the train designs, and though each train will probably have a different design, which will look really cool. I wonder if it's going to be the same car per train or different cars. For example, let's say it's a Mustang or something. Let's say, will all four cars of the same train be an orange Mustang, or will it be a Mustang, then I don't know, Nissan in a different car? type of thing i wonder if that if they'll do different cars per train or just all one car but four different trains or something with four different sets of cars very interesting uh i guess we'll figure that out if it gets built if it gets built later on okay so these calls these cars will um be using a spin a controlled spinning system like escape from green dots and these these knees recently opened or official to open on next weekend uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind coaster where the cars are doing controlled spinning. Um, so it's not a free spin, like I'd say that one of those mock coasters, an Osprey Farm, um, Sierra Sidewinder, that's a free spin coaster. This would be a controlled spin like Green Gods, Cosmic Rewind, things like that. And trains pull out a station onto a multi launch track area. They're spin to launch up into a rather bizarre looking half loop, half -loop shaped spike track. 
This is like the recent Pantheon, another in intimate characters that kind of have the sign icebreaker as well. Um, that's not an intimate coaster, that's a premier coaster. But you go out of the station and you kind of move over the loading platform and kind of launch backward, backwards, go up a spike, go down, go over a little airtime hill, then climb up the big hill, but you can't quite make it. So then you go backwards again and then back up the spike and then get launched up into the finish of the course. So it's not a shuttle coaster, but it incorporates that spike element like a shuttle coaster would. But yeah, Icebreaker and Pantheon both have those spikes. Pantheon is more adept to this because that is an intimate coaster. Again, Icebreaker at SeaWorld Orlando is a premier rides coaster. So this would be more like Pantheon, which is a very uh, successful coaster and has a very big spike. I'll, I would actually talked about it on Theme Park Tribune, uh, the podcast, when he was on the podcast, Wizards Den. That video will be going up soon. Um, but yeah, I'll actually I'll, I'll put a picture of Pantheon up here when we're done with this, but let's keep checking out. All right, so the best entrance is going to yeah, again, I'll show you a visual of Pantheon so we can describe what it's talking, so you can see what it's talking about. This one looks to be at about 90 degree angle, so again, the trains will kind of be going up like that. Then this is really cool. So, and I guess um, this spike will look like a giant C, almost, I guess, comes like a Hot Wheels track, in some opinions, which, is, which would be fitting for Fast and Furious. So then you go, it's going to fall or stop, go back through the station or go fly through a fly, either go through the, I don't, it won't be a, I won't do a fly, it'll probably do a fly through the station, not won't go through the station, like won't be the same station track, there'll be another train loading at this point, and this train will probably have to fly through over or near the station. And you're on the launch track, and then you're going to go up and over the Starway, and this is the real cool part. So the Starway, of course, is the escalator bank that takes you down from the upper lot to the lower lot, and the coaster is going to go up over that Starway and then drop. I mean, just drop. I don't know how steep the drop would be, but it will be drop right over the mountain and just kind of circle around below the Simpsons building and over the studio tour area. And right at midway point there, and kind of the supports will just attach to the mountain like that. It's gonna look really sick. It's gonna be super, super cool if built if it's built as envisioned. Because not only will you get amazing views from that part of the coaster, it'll be such a cool drop. It basically be this will be a terrain coaster, um, the way it's envisioned, which is fantastic. Terrain coasters are so cool. For those of you who don't know, a terrain coaster is a coaster that uses its terrain to its advantage. So, like Cheetah Hunt, for example, kind of uses its terrain at Cheetah Hunt's at Bush Gardens, uh, Tampa. Yeah, Bush Gardens, Tampa. And kind of goes through these shrubs and it's really low to the ground. Kind of uses that terrain like a cheetah go going to his advantage. And then here, um, this coaster will just use the mountain to his advantage because it'll just drop right over the mountain. Also, that new Gerstlauer, co Gerstlauer coaster in, I think, Colorado or one of those mountain states. Um, it's going to be the world's tallest and steepest Gerstlauer, Gerstlauer dive coaster. Um, one of the tallest and steepest coasters ever. It's going to go right over a mountain as well with the beyond vertical drop, so that's cool. But yeah, so we go through Starway, go around the hillside to the Simpsons ride and you're going to drop down into an unknown roller coaster section so an unknown roller coaster element this would be I feel like that area because uh if they they, they, don't, don't, they can use a straight section they can go around the mountain of course the hillside behind the Simpsons and then you're going to turn around and go up that same hillside you just came up you're going to go right up over the starway again it seems like then you're gonna go towards the station. But um interesting enough, could they put or they could, I feel like they definitely could, but will they put a Mosasaurus roll, which is just a bear roll? Obviously they can call it they call it something else. I wonder if they just call it a bear roll or call it some other cool name. But the Mosasaurus roll on Velocico on Velocicoaster is one of the most popular, if not the most popular element on the ride. It just visually looks stunning. 
and people who write it love it. So I wonder, could they add that element as you drop down and make a turn towards the hillside by the Simpsons? Imagine that. Hmm. Interesting. But I feel like that's an element you want people from riding the escalators or something to see. I feel like you want to, wouldn't want to put it behind the mountain. Hmm. Interesting. I feel like this coaster will, will have an inversion, though, especially even if it's, a, again, not a massive loop or anything, but... If it does have an inversion, I feel like it will be a barrel roll. Again, something similar to the Mosasaurus roll on the Velocicos. Very, very interesting. I will have to look for plans and see what they can do there. Um, yeah, again, as he as Lan says, this is just a concept. But it will be very fun to watch, whether you're riding the coaster or just watching the coaster. As that drop over the hillside where I assume the picture, the on ride picture at the bottom of the drop, the on ride picture, that'd be a perfect spot for that to be taken. People will be ter terrified or very fun, very happy guests coming on that drop. That should be really cool. Also, before I want before I go, I wanted to talk about an I a theory I have. A theory. Um Again, not even a rumor, just an idea. There's a new Falls Lake attraction. The new attraction on the Falls Lake, the Western Sets, heavily rumored to be... Nope, I want to do a video on that soon. I'm going to try to actually see, try to see the sets myself without going to the studio tour. Maybe on Saturday when I go back to Universal. But what if... Yeah, that's going to open this summer. Nope, opens in July. But no matter what, that should open this summer, hopefully by July. It's built like right next to Supercharged. And even if not right away, it's such kind of an awkward angle, I feel like, for the trams. They kind of go like, I don't know, it's kind of, it's a weird angle, weird turn. What if they're building that as a replacement, right? So what if that becomes, even if maybe not soon, but maybe next year, they demolish Fast and Furious Supercharged and the this new Western stunt show becomes the new finale to the studio tour. A lot of things, a lot of people would be happy and they the universal would fix a lot of wrongs. People don't most people don't like supercharged. Especially in Orlando as it's its own attraction here. They kind of like they don't like it, but they give it a pass because it's part of the studio tour and the studio tour is like an hour long. It's just one tiny three minute segment out of like a 60 minute long ride. So it's not like eh it could be better but you know, it's not the best thing, but, you know, it's not the worst thing either. So I wonder, if they demolish that, I'm sure everyone will be happy. And it's not like the studio tour is not getting, you know, less of a value, because now you have these Western sets, Sun Show here, maybe themed to Nope, um, as your new finale. That will make it. The studio tour have a much better finale full of practical sets and no screens at all, which is fantastic. That's what Universal has been doing of late. Then get rid of a much maligned attraction, uh, Supercharged, while placing, finally giving the Fast and Furious a coaster that it so rightly deserves. I mean, Fast and Furious screamed for a coaster because it's all about racing, going fast. It screams for like a West Coast racer type of thing as well, but a drifting coaster sounds amazing as well. Universal will be doing three things right. Three things right. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if Supercharged gets, a, even if they don't want to demolish buildings, it definitely gets rethemed. But I don't know, it's such kind of interesting angle to how they go through the sets right there. But I don't know, I feel like that could be, they could demolish the Supercharged building. And after they get off the Western sets, that could just be the grand finale. Um, but either way, whether they demolish the building or not, Supercharged, if this coaster gets built, will be rethemed. And what do you guys think in the comments below? Uh, let me know what you guys think of this proposed Fast and Furious Hollywood Drift coaster. I love the name. Nice little spoof on Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think of the name? The coaster layout. The proposed coaster layout, rumored, sorry, coaster layout, and also my idea that the new Western sets, Western Sun Show, could be the finale of the 
steel to it, and then demolish the supercharged. I feel like it'll be a triple win for Universal, and I think it'll be fantastic. And I feel like with the high crowd levels and with the success of the Lost Ghoster and Hagrid's and all the recent Ghosters, Universal might want to fast track this one to get it open as soon as, uh, just as soon as just like a couple years max after Nintendo World opens. So I'd give it maybe a 2025 opening date. 2024, 2025 opening date. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe for more theme park updates. And as always, have a fantastic day.